In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Shape Builder tool in Kittle, otherwise known as the Pathfinder. You might have seen that in other design tools. It's going to do the same thing. I put together a little spread of different shapes here to show you exactly what happens. And then I'm going to show you how to utilize this perhaps inside of a template, or I'm going to show you how to use it with text. So let's go ahead and dive in right here. Now, to see the Shape Builder tool, what you need to do is have two elements highlighted okay i've got two shapes here and then over here on the right you're gonna see these four icons which you probably are familiar with with illustrator or something like that really any design tool kind of has this so you have union subtract intersect and exclude you might also see things like minus front or a subtract front or something like that so I'm gonna go through each one of these. I've set up a board to show you what happens for each. So this top board, I'm gonna leave the same so you can see a before and after. With this one, I am going to actually take this, bring it down, and I'm going to raise this circle to be at the halfway point of the circle to be exact, there we go, so, so that it aligns up uh, with the rectangle. And so now that I have both of these selected, I'm gonna go over here and click Union, and then that is going to make it one shape. And what's so great about this is I can grab the corner radiuses and now do that with either of the corners. And if this was a sharp angle up here, obviously they would be changing the corners of the top as well. There's only two here at the bottom, right? Because these two angles right here meet, but also the color can be changed. And then what I love about this is now the borders are seamless around the entire shape as well as shadow. So no longer do you have to do this. Even if I made these two things the same color to be kind of a unique shape if I grouped them together and tried to add border to say to this one and then to this one it's not really gonna work right so this is a much easier way to do that so let me go ahead and take these off and boom okay all right so just so you can see a little bit of a before and after there is what it was without them united this is what it is with them united so now the subtract one the second one so if i grab both of these shapes you're going to see i have a triangle here and i have a square so if i go over and i click the second one which is subtract you can see what's happening in the icon which is the front one is going to be subtract from the back that's pretty much how all of these are going to work anything that's on front is going to be affected right but if i go ahead and hit subtract there it is now it has taken that out of the front of that and you can get some really interesting and cool shapes this way if you're wanting to create interesting shape packs for you to use in your design designs or maybe if you want to have certain elements for your designs just little pieces that kind of fill in gaps this is a really really neat way to do that and then of course this can all be manipulated because it is now a new shape and anywhere where there is a meeting point you can utilize the rounding corners feature you can add border change the color there you can add shadow and it is all seamless just like I mentioned with the previous one all right, on to the next one, which is intersect. So this one is probably the most obvious from the way the icon looks. If I click this, boom, it's gonna leave the one here in the middle, which is a really neat way to get different shapes, especially like this. If you're gonna duplicate it and maybe you're gonna make like a little star or a flower shape, that kind of reminds me of like a rosebud or something like that. But per usual, you can add your border and you can add your shadow and everything works seamlessly if you want it to, which is a really, really nice feature. So again, there was the before and here is the after of the intersect shape. All right, moving on to the last one, which is exclude. So if I grab both of these, you can tell from the icon there that if we want to exclude as opposed to intersect, that means we're going to take away what is in the middle. Thank you. So when I hit that, it means now this shape in the intersection is now excluded from this one. So these both originally started as the same shapes here, and now this one is taken out, which is super neat. Honestly, you can get some really cool and interesting shapes. By the way, the border now works and the shadow works perfectly. 
Again, that's a super strong suit of this feature. So I know that's a basic overview of how it works. I encourage you to go and play with different shapes. You can now use the shape tool here, which is super strong to instantly and quickly grab anything you want and start playing around with it. And let's figure out how we might use this for a type layout. Okay, so maybe we have this one and we could go over here and we could go to ornaments and look at some badges, some rays, some frames, some circles, panels. We could do that. That would be cool. Cool. but maybe we just want something more basic and we can just start building our own layout for the time being I am going to turn it to that kind of pastel pink and let's go ahead and send this to the back I'm going to send this one here make this one a little bit smaller so that it just encompasses that bottom text right there and what I'm going to do is the same thing I'm going to raise this up here I'm going to make this go out like this I'm going to bring this across the side, bring this to about right here. And then I'm going to keep doing this to kind of build my own version, so to speak, of this frame that we're kind of building, this background, if you will. So this one looks like it needs a little bit more space here on this side. Okay, and then we have some gaps that we're going to fill in, of course. But now to get this kind of perspective this circular nature I need to grab my ellipse tool I'm gonna to go ahead and grab that I am going to again change it to that color I'm gonna send that to the background so that it kind of fills this space and I know this isn't perfect we're gonna change it to be a little bit more in line with what we want because we want this to kind of follow the space I should say but it's kind of coming together we need to grab another one I kind of want it to be circular here again this is all going to become one unit. I'm going to send that to the back just to do that. Maybe we have another round piece here to go with the bottom part of the R. You can just play it around. I don't know exactly how. Yeah, I don't know exactly how I want to do this. But let's start putting these pieces together. All right, so you could try to select multiple of these, but then you'll notice over on the right side that the Shape Builder tool does go away. Now, the reason is if you were going to exclude the intersection. Well, which one of these is the intersection? Now, we may figure out how to do that later in the future. I know there are more robust tools that where you can pick lots of shapes and it'll just kind of assume. But for example, these three things are overlapping and so it needs to know which one to overlap with. Therefore, clicking two at a time is the best solution. So that's what I like to do. I like to just build upon this two at a time. If I go to Union, now they're the same. And as you can see, we've got some rounded stuff going on right here. And since I have welded two boxes together, I can go and use the Radius tools now to get a curvature. Now, this is not extremely perfect and we would probably want to play with this to get it a little bit more robust to match the curvature of the ovals that I just put in here. But it already kind of looks pretty cool. I don't know if it's exactly right, but yeah, it's there. So now we could grab this one and we could grab the bottom one. We could unite that together, right? And so now we have that as a shape. We could grab this top one, go ahead and union that as a shape, grab the second one over here, grab that as a shape, and then grab our final one over here, and union that as a shape. Now we have a really cool shape that we can play with, right? And expand, and this is our own panel. So now we could grab this, we can add a border now, and so that's perfect around the entire thing right here. If we wanted to add shadow, we can do that. We could even change the shadow to the same color. We can change the blur, offset. And this is really unique, right? This is a specific shape. This is a specific panel border thing that I created. Yes, I did that using the shape builder tool. Now, if I was gonna make this a little bit more robust, I'd probably have something right here to kind of fill in the overall shape. This is probably not the best one. No, no, it's nice. It's so nice. This is also a little bit too close to the C and the E down here on the bottom, maybe not enough space here. So if I was critiquing this design as what I was doing, maybe don't copy exactly what I just did because I would wanna make it a little bit more specific and robust. Also have a little bit of weird space here, but if I take it back away, obviously the composition is nice. So I was just showing you how you could utilize this 
in a design if you were trying to build a component of your own. So this is an extremely helpful feature. I think that is going to help you a lot, but I wanna know what you think down in the comments. Let me know, are you gonna be using the Shape Builder tool? Did you even know it was out? Is this the first video where you saw that it worked? Did you stumble upon it yourself? How hard is it to use? Do you find it confusing or difficult to use? We would love to know these answers to these questions so that we can make the features better for you. So let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Kittle channel, liking the videos, subscribing to the channel because it helps us create more videos just like this one, as well as any other topics or videos you might wanna see. Feel free to drop that in the comments as well. Well, don't forget to check out the overall UI update. I linked it down in the description as well. It goes over everything that's brand new in the Kittle. If you're just here, fantastic. This is a great time to get in and use Kittle. But if you've been using this for a while and a little bit confused, that video is going to be great for you. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.